Hi there, uh, this is going to be, I'm not sure, one video, a few videos taken to pieces, this Tascam Porter 1 Porter Studio, Mini Studio. I'm not going to be fixing anything in particular in these videos, it's just like a little bit of uh, scouting for anyone who's got an issue with one of these and would like a little bit of reconnaissance about how everything's put together before they start cleaning or soldering or changing belts or lubricating or what have you. If we were going to clean the mixer then we would need to take all the knobs off but I'm going to focus on just getting the transport out and if all you're doing is taking the transport out then there's nothing that needs to come off from the front. The locations of the screws are pretty obvious. Some Porter Studios there's a bunch of holes that are actually just the hollowed out section of mounting posts that don't have any screws in them but you can see all the screw heads. So one, two, three, four, five, six screws and they're all like this. So maybe three or four centimetres plain shaft and then the ferrule below that wide ferrule going in the plastic mounting post inside. Once the screws are removed, it doesn't particularly matter which way you open it because the cables connecting the two halves are pretty long. I would suggest that you let those stretch out so you can put this part of the case below this part. Um, because I have been in here, I can't remember exactly what there was in the way of cable ties holding this all together. So perhaps when you open there isn't going to be as much give. Just look for cable ties and cable tidies that are holding that together. By cable ties I just mean something like this, you know, a little zip tie. Um, if you're careful not to cut the electrical cables, you can just cut those with scissors and replace them. They're not expensive. So I'm just going to turn this around like this so we can more easily see a set of grey cables here is terminating in a header on this mixer board. That seems loose enough. If you're worried about breaking these wires then do grab the sides of that with a pair of pliers. And then these brown, red, orange and yellow cables correspond to channels bearing one, red two, orange three and yellow four of the, I believe it's the record head, let me check that. Yes, I was just looking at a spares unit over there, so both of these headers here pertain to recording and playback. So you can see that they're six pin headers, white one and red one situated under these four relays. Those cables look a bit thinner, so I'm definitely going to use pliers to remove those connectors from the headers. Connector and header is just like plug and socket if you're not familiar with the terminology. We've got three more electrical cables to unplug. So we've got a seven pin header here. It's right beside the main oscillator, this large silver part. We've got brown, red, orange, yellow, pale blue, navy blue, purple. Those are thicker wire so I can just pull that out by hand. We've got a little ribbon cable, brown, red and orange, and that's going up to a voltage regulator up here. Note before you take it off that the brown cable should be lined up with the uppermost of these pins. I say that because it would be possible to flip that over that way and put it on that way round on reassembly. That would be the wrong way. And last of all, we've got a little brown red cable it's going up to a two pin header up here by the power switch. Now we can unscrew the cassette player from the plastic case. This top right corner needs to be removed. This one down here, diagonally down to the right from this large solenoid. We need to remove that. There's a screw down here just where these magnetic head cables emerge. And one over here just beside this flywheel, the flywheel being this large part here that I'm moving with my finger. You can see there's a hole in this printed circuit board here, there's a screw in there. You might need to disentangle some cables in order to get this out, but that is everything. Now this transport, made by the GEC company, appears in a bunch of multi-trackers from the late 1980s through into the 1990s. Yamaha units, Fostex units, a couple of Tascam units that have this in. 
I've already covered dismantling, rebuilding, lubricating, replacing the rubber parts and troubleshooting this model of transport. I will add all those videos to a playlist available from my channel homepage about the Task Importer 1. But at the time I'm filming this, all those videos are in a playlist for the Fostex X15, uh, which is the first model featuring this transport that I did a teardown of. So if you want any information about any problems you're having with that, information on belt sizes, all that kind of stuff, have a look at that video.